But as far as all the golf courses that get play during Masters Week, mm -hmm. how do you like contextualize where we're at right now? You mean this place? Yeah. Well, I mean, a trip to Augusta is not complete without coming to here. I mean, this this is where it all started around here. So, yeah. I mean, you gotta, um, gotta come to Palmetto. That's what we call it. <laughs> I mean, you gotta come to Palmetto, right? That's what we call soundbite. <laughs> Yeah, my name's Tom Moore. I'm the ex-pro here. I'm the pro emeritus now. I was here for 32 years. So this is considered one of the oldest continuous 18-hole loops? It's, a, it's the second oldest 18-hole golf course in America. And from what I've read, almost every architect in their time had some involvement all with this course? Of, all of the top architects and their firms have been here. And, you know, Reese Jones, Tom Doak, Gil Hans. But this is the oldest USGA membership certificate in existence, and it's January 22nd, 1896. And then Ralph Hutchison was the first assistant pro. He announced on the 18th green at the Masters U.S. Open and PGA. And these are balls that he collected from the players coming off from Hogan, Nelson. And then there was one spot open and Ben Hogan, who's a good friend, gave me a, a ball from the Ryder Cup that he captained and won. So no, you boys have a good time out there and uh, we're glad to have you. Thanks for having us And we'll have a beer later. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I'd love to talk to you about this. Because don't start drinking until... Till my watch gets put on. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so descending onto the first fairway here is an experience that not every golf course gives you, but a lot do. The first hole of a golf course is always very um, special, you know? You can't really recreate it, and sometimes by the end of the round, you forget it. But when you're in it, there's a different level of energy than there is for any other hole. That's kind of one of the interesting things about the 18 holes of golf is that each one kind of has its specific place in time, you know? I'd be curious to look at the psychology of the order of holes and how they go. One isn't merely just an opening hole, it's, it's the beginning of the entire experience that you're going to have there, especially if you've never played there before. My dad's a huge golfer, he wanted me to play with him, and uh, I just thought it was super boring until I got out of school and started playing some. and. Now we go on golf trips together and it's cool. Basically the same. Yeah, very not different from that. Maybe golf just was boring in the 90s and now well, golf is better. All right, so Clayton just showed up in the neighborhood here. You grew up playing here? Man. I did. So you had a sick hat. Not, you don't, th that hat, where's that hat from? This is from the Augusta National, not the Masters. But you, <laughs> well, that's number one. But you said earlier, a lot, a lot of people around here, what do they call Augusta National? Just the National. Nothing special to it. It's, it's so close. We. Uh, it's uh, just another just another course for us, you know. <laughs> Have you played it? I've not. I've been on it. I've never had the chance to play it. But it's not about playing it. It's about it's about having it in it's your backyard. Of course, yeah. Palmetto Golf Club here, obviously unique. What do you see as a person who grew up playing here? Who's played here probably what hundreds of times? I'd say about a hundred times, probably. You know, maybe more. The course is always in, is always changing from hole to hole. And uh, the condition of it has always been like top notch. And it's just, it's a beautiful course that's like, it's tough. And um, it's really cool because it's just an old course that is, you know, tucked into my backyard, you know? Yeah, and I'm, I'm loving this course. It's very challenging. And like most old courses, the biggest challenge is the greens. We've got, here, can you hold this for a second? Yeah. We've got a lot of um, false fronts. So you got to hit them high, right? What do, you, what do you say? I got 148 here. I gotta say, get around this tree. Like, is is the play here miss long, kind of? I mean, is, or is it just you gotta hit the number? You just gotta hit the number on this hole. No. You're up. I got lucky. And then I got unlucky. Going to take preventative measures.
My name is Josh McCumber and I'm here with the Benjamin Girls Golf Team. I'm the golf coach and we're in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. We had an opportunity to get to come to the very first inaugural uh, women's amateur at Augusta National, the Augusta National Women's Amateur. So we brought eight girls from the golf team and it was just an experience of a lifetime yesterday. Really big deal for Augusta National to have it. And I think when they announced it a year ago, I think it was pretty exciting. Women for the first time playing at Augusta in tournament-like conditions. And it was pretty electric. I mean, it, and it turned out for the billing and the girls were just loving it because they're getting to see girls that, that they know and they can look up to uh, playing college golf. A lot of the girls on my team, almost all of them want to play college golf. So it was just a great experience to watch them. And that back nine was, was special with how too well those two girls played. Just seeing kids our age playing and showing that it truly could be us and it was incredible. Just It was really inspiring. Yeah. Definitely. That course is like nothing else. You can't beat it. It's so beautiful and the grass is so green and it's just so pristine. You can't find a flaw out there. <laughs> First par three at Palmetto, the seventh hole. Right. Took a while. Feel pretty hungry for some ace cam. Luckily we're finally here. Ace Cam's live, but it's also what Bobby Jones called the best par three for metal play he's ever seen. He's ever seen. The reason why is because there isn't anywhere to miss. Oh, Ace Cam. That's okay. Clayton here and I are just reliving the eagle putt that went down on uh, seven. Just a classic. Uh, 18, 20 footer, left, right, or excuse me, right, left, eight foot break, absolutely ridiculous. Downhill, you couldn't see anything like that on tour. This is, this only happens up home meadow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it had a ton of break. And that's what's cool about this course is, even here, you look, innocuous par four green. Is there a bunker on the screen? No. There's no bunkers, but look at this mound. I mean, you've got like huge mounds here all around, it falls off in the back. It really is reminiscent of what happens when you go to the national for the first time. And I think that's one of the coolest things about golf in this region is, you know, it's got a real intelligence to the ground game. And, um, you know, the greens are very severe, very quick. There's always going to be a, like, no matter how good or bad the round is, you're always going to have a shot, one shot that keeps you coming back. And, um, but yeah, those triumphant moments are, or what makes the game. I mean, you think of from starting as a little kid to watching, watching some of these guys on tour, you all, these triumphant moments are what make the, make the game so spectacular and so exciting to watch. And it's, it's, um, it fills you up like, like nothing else, man. It's, it's pretty awesome. I guess I'm mostly interested in the uh, the green complexes. Would you say that's kind of what this course is most known for? Absolutely. If you get it in the wrong spot, um, you can't break 80. Is that what makes a great golf course to you? What do you think? Well, you don't have to make a golf course 10,000 yards to make it tough. And, you know, most of the modern golf courses, if you look at them, um, They've got tees that they can go back to 8,000 yards or more. And right now we're playing 6,500 and I'm, I just keep scratching my head. I think it has an unusual characteristic, which is that it's super raw. Like you look like you're out in the middle of nowhere, but it's very well maintained. Absolutely. But to a degree that's, it's not want too much of the other. Well, you know, the golf course was never meant to play a um, hundred people a day 
It was very exclusive. You know, over the years, President Taft tried to come out here whenever he was visiting over in Augusta, and he called the pro shop up wanting to see about coming out, and the message was, uh, this President Taft, I'd like to see about playing Palmetto Golf Club tomorrow. And the caddy master that was in the shop taking phone calls says, we haven't got a member of, by the name of Taft and hung up the phone down. <laughs> so what are you doing down here? You're visiting? Well, I'm working next week. Yeah. And just kind of golf architecture geek. Never been to Aiken. One of my college suite mates was from Aiken, <laughs> but never been. So we decided we would search out Aiken Golf Club and then swing by Palmetto. Just, I would rather do this sort of thing and be able to appreciate a golf course rather than have to be out there and playing and posting a score. So you came out intentionally without gloves. Correct. Just to get a vibe. Correct. I believe, look at a golf course to really appreciate it, you go from back from green to tee Whoa. rather than straight forward. It's kind of like when you're a kid at the diner and they have the placemat with the games on the menu and you're doing the maze and you realize really quickly that the easiest way to solve every maze is to start at the end. And then it's just obvious. Then you just follow everything. Whereas if you start at the beginning, you get caught in all sorts of little eddies and swirls, and you get lost. And that's the same idea with the golf course. But if you were to, if you were to walk this place backwards, it would seem much bigger, much wider, and the puzzle would not be nearly as complicated. <clears throat> that's insane. This golf course? <laughs> I'm already seeing it. I'm like the shortest hole. Right? I mean, look how much bigger it looks. You have a blind tee shot back there at 17. Yeah. It's not nearly as frightening from on here, right? And when you come to Augusta, as much as you you think about the champions that have put the green jacket on, it was about the amateur golf experience. Bobby Jones was, while well, he was classified technically by the USGA at the end as a professional because of the commercials and the endorsements for equipment, movies, he was a lifelong amateur. And the amateur part of the Masters is still hugely important. How do you feel about private clubs that have different rules for women than men? If I'm, so I'll give you my, my example, and it's been since changed, corrected, and however you want to talk about it. I was a dues-paying regular bond-holding member at a club in South Florida, paid the same in as every other male member, and I couldn't play on Saturday mornings. That bothers me, and it's since been, been corrected. But if it's just a, a male men's club, I don't care. There's every opportunity to do a women's club. Oh, this was great. Yeah, nice to meet you, Dave. <laughs> nice to meet you, Daddy. Thank you. Nice Sean Tully was the best work you've done. Hey, th whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Tully's, uh, Tully's changed my life in a lot of ways. Like, in, uh, whenever we're out, he's always like, go talk to this guy, go talk to that guy. He, and he spawned a lot. Did he tell you about uh, the guy that contacted him, whose life you changed and he changed? So just because of that interview, there was a guy who lives in Lexington, Kentucky, who had been golf course assistant superintendent, got out of the business, was doing landscaping, not loving it because what he was doing in golf wasn't lighting his fire. And then he heard you and Sean talking and he said, I got to get back in. Whoa. Wow. That's, so, I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. My phone I've never seen. I'm just done. fixing the light exposure. <laughs> that's good. That was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, I really had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Yeah. I really can't tell you how great this was. Daddy was here. And yeah. What a great it was afternoon. Good to see you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you forgot to mention that you guys match perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>